Okay, so where we had le left off was after we had gone into the um, preferences and on the when I changed my angle to 360 degrees, um, my stylus, my art pen was no longer recognized. So I had to restart. So that's why it ended abruptly and why we're back here. Um, I'm going to open up just real quick so that I can have something to work with as I finish showing you the layout. I'm just going to open up a small painting just so that I can have a canvas up um, so that the layers panel will be active and I can show you some items in there. Uh, the one thing that you need to um, do every time that you plan on painting and you grab a new brush, this is the oil smeary round, we'll go through all the categories soon, but um, so I have my brush and it's a oil smeary round brush. This is the um, toolbar, or the, excuse me, the menu bar that goes with my brush tool. So this is the brush and this is everything I can do with it. Now right here I can change colors, move around here, or if I want to get out of the browns and goes to the reds, there, the blues, etc. So you can move this around and this. You can also make this wheel come apart and work on it, have it just um, over here floating. We'll show you that later. It, whenever um, I choose a color, say for instance this red, down here is the color harmonies. These are the colors that harmonize with my red that I chose. Now, if I move it around, as you can see, the harmony changes depending on what color I have selected. So if I choose a red and I want to keep with these color harmonies so that I can go back and forth and, and keep uh, choosing that color, you lock it in. So that way, if I move this up here, it does not change. Now these are all, you can choose the, uh, these are all the other ones that you can open up also. So we have the complementary harmony open. If you want to do the split complementary, click on it. There they are. If you want to keep them, you can lock it in. That way when I am color, I struggle with color. So, um, and harmony. So when they came out with the color harmonies in 2020, I was super excited and it has really helped me a lot on choosing colors to use. So um, that's what the color harmony is. Now the layers panel is going to be the exact same, but let me back up just a minute. Like I was saying, whenever you have a brush chosen, one thing that is very important, some days you might be handy, uh, <laughs> heavy-handed in your um, work. Some days you might be light. So sometimes I will, well, on my layout, I have my brush, I have a brush calibration panel that's open so that I can calibrate my brush to my stroke that I'm using at the moment. It is also under edit where, um, and then preferences where we went before, and then at the bottom of preferences, brush tracking. And then you would just make a couple marks and say, okay, it knows then how um, your hand works. It is also under brush control panel, brush calibration. So if you go under window, brush control panel, brush calibration, it brings up the brush calibration panel. And what I do at that point, this is the brush calibration. I pull it out. And I close that and I always have my brush calibration here. I click on that and it's the same thing as um, going under edit preferences and brush tracking. So you just make a couple marks, however, and then say, okay. So it knows that that is what my hand is doing. So I, um, and sometimes if I change back and forth between, uh, so I, I'm using the smeary round, but say I want to use the real clumpy wet, um, I'll do the brush tracking again. I don't know if that's necessary. I, um, when I was working with some chalks, I saw that it was, so I've just almost gotten into the habit of doing that every time. So make sure that you always uh, calibrate your brush to what, to know what ha your hand is like that day. And believe it or not, there will be some days when you're tired and you're not as um, hard on your, I guess, uh, tablet. 
So we discussed the menu bar and the toolbar. Um, with the, we had, I had said the gradient pan, panel and then it has different presets. In, as you get going, you can also choose, um, it's so similar, very, very similar to how you choose them with Photoshop. But as you get going, you can also make your own gradients and save them here. And that's more advanced, of course, and you can learn that. But this is something that um, if you wanted to have a background, etc., that you could uh, play around with your gradients. On the Layers panel. Now, Layers panel works um, like Photoshop, very similar. Down here is your layer commands. Um, I'm going to add a new layer. And then um, you can see you can group layers, ungroup layers, collapse layers, drop layers. This is your original canvas. It's always going to be locked. You can change your um, composite methods. Uh, I think it's called blending modes in Photoshop. And right here they are. So if you wanted to say, grab a brush, paint a little bit. This is the real clumpy wet brush. And it does a build up. That's kind of cool. Um, you can change, it's on normal, but you can change it to gel cover and go through, you can just go through just like you do with Photoshop. So what does this do? When you are working later, um, delete this, that paint strokes. When you are putting paper layers, um, textures in later, when we'll be going over that, you can uh, change it to multiply or um, any of the other types of multiply screen overlay, etc based on what you need your paper to look like. Now, when you paint, there are paper textures that you're going to be painting with. If you add a layer of paper, that would be an addition too. So I don't want to confuse you too much, but um, we'll show you that. I've discussed the color wheel, um, the mixer. This is where you would choose colors, mix them together on your palette. We'll get into that later. I just want you to be aware that that is there. Uh, color set libraries. If you find um, a lot, some people will have their specific color sets that they work with. You can get others and import them into here. Say Bob Ross had a specific color set that he worked with. You could actually get, and I do have it available, the um, Bob Ross color set library and import it here so that you only work with the colors um, that he was using. And then i um, trying to make sure advanced on your brushes. Whenever you go to use a brush, um, and this is something that is also very important. Starting out, when you choose a, a brush, we're going to go, this right here takes you back to the last brush we used, which was the Smeary Round Oils. There you go. Um, when you click down, on the arrow, the little corner with this little arrow here, it's going to bring up all your recent brushes. You can choose any of these. If you click on this last used brush, it's always going to go just to the last one that you had. So if I use any of these, smeary round, the very first thing you're always going to want to do is hit your reset tool. Reason why is you might have made some changes up here for something that you were working on previously. I could have been using this brush a week ago and haven't used it since. And I pull it up and I start working with it and it's not behaving the way it typically does. The reason why is because I made changes a week ago, totally forgot about it. Um, and then pulled it back up to use it and it's not behaving. So what I always do is when I pull up a brush, I immediately hit reset. So it goes to what the Corel Painter default is. And then I can start painting, adding my brush strokes, and it, um, and it does what it's supposed to do. This right here is if you are stroking 
and you want it to be by points. It's totally boring to me. I don't know why anybody would need to do that, but because it's so much more fun to have this and to play. Um, this is your size. If you hover over anything, it, it's going to show you and tell you what it is. So this is the size. If you click it, it brings up a menu of anything. It tells you what the expression, if there is none on the expression. Right here, it's pressure, meaning it's pressure sensitive. If I go light, it's going to be like that. If I go heavy handed, it's going to be like that. So I can actually do that. Um, now this size one will change the size of your nib. You can also use your right bracket and left bracket key, but if you do, I would only use your right and left bracket key if you're wanting to do it a couple sizes a piece. That's up, that's down, because otherwise if you hold it down, um, say you're at, you're down here at 4.7, which is very small, and you want it to get bigger, and you hold down just your right bracket key to get it bigger. It takes a little while, and then you got to wait. So it's always easier to just see it's still doing its thing there. So it's always easier um, to just do your size. And if you don't have a real fast processor, it will even take longer. So um, also, there is a reset. Uh, Let's see, a reset, a bleed, and a feature. Feature is the amount of space between the bristles. Um, the bleed reset, if you hover over everything up here, it will show you or give you an explanation. Um, they do, they did change it to where you could bring up menus right beside if you want to change things. Um, so that is a, that's available. And then the advanced is when you really get into the brush, everything about it. And... We're not going to cover this yet because I really don't want you to get too overwhelmed. Um, I would like for you to initially start off with just one brush category and we're, I'm going to show you. I have a lot more available right here than what most people will have. So when you are seeing, don't try to do a comparison of what you see on your um, brush categories here versus what I have because um, I have a lot more. I think what I'm going to do is um, have a video just for the brush category. So that's going to be next. I want to go over a couple more things and then we're going to go straight into all these brushes. Um, let me, one more thing that I wanted to talk about on the layers, I'm going to skip back here, is there is masking also available, um, just like there is in Photoshop. There is um, the new layer. The dynamic plugins is um, pretty much it, the equalizes if you're wanting to boost the darks and the lights, uh, glass distortion, kaleidoscope. Super fun to play with some of these and look at them. Uh, liquid metal posterize. Some of them you'll recognize. Tear is torn paper on the edges. It doesn't do it quite as well as um, doing it yourself, and uh, but it still does get you started and let's see we will go over some of these brightness and contrast so this is stuff that would would work with that level one of the cool things is is that it um creates a new layer at the top of whatever so if i wanted to do equalize right here it's going to bring up equalize and then it's going to set anything that's below, it's going to combine into this layer and it's going to put it there. Um, and then at that point, if you want to change the composite method or which it, composite method is also the blending mode, like I mentioned before for Photoshop users, um, that would help you. One of the best inventions uh, the, or th thought processes for 2020 is... I apologize, my dogs were going crazy. Um, one of the best inventions was if you turn off this, these eyes over here are on and off so that you can see the layer. If you have it turned off, it used to be that you could paint on that layer when you couldn't see it. Now, 2020 has made it that it will not let you paint on it, which was 
fabulous because in the past you could paint on a hidden layer and then something would show up later and you would have no idea where it was. So that is a big improvement for me. It's very helpful for someone, especially if you work like I do with a lot of layers all the time and you need to know um, where you have put something. You can rename your layers, same as in um, Photoshop. You just click on the layer. You can double click and then type in the name. You can right click and rename. And then if you are on a layer and you right click, Here's all the, um, the layer attribute. One of the good things about layer attribute is, let's say I'm working on this. This is all my smeary round um, paintbrush. If I right click, say I love this, I right click and click on layer attribute. This is a notes that I can put for this layer. I can put smeary round. so that I will remember what brush it was that I used. Um, might not seem that important now, but later as you get more advanced um, and, and you're doing harder things and you're like, oh, how did I put those whiskers on this cat? What was that brush? There you go. If you had, say, you had this issue, this uh, layer called whiskers and you're painting a cat, how did I get those whiskers there? What brush did I use? You can save it in there. So that hit, that was another thing that was wonderful. Um, you can lock a layer. What does locking a layer do? It means the layer is locked. You can't paint on it any lo longer, but you can have it open. So you can have it open, so you're seeing it, but it's locked. If you unlock it, do that, you still, you can't paint on it, but you don't see it. So that's the difference between the lock and the, the eye closing. And let's see, we did the masking. Masking works the exact same. If you want something included or excluded, you do that. And then you paint neither black or white. Um, if you have more, if you're not familiar with masking and you have uh, questions about that, please ask. And then let's see... Um, the shadow map, we did those. The trash can, if you need to delete a layer. Um, this right here, pick up underlying color. If you had a um, something here that you were clone painting, so on the canvas you have a picture, and you want to clone paint here, meaning you're using a cloning brush that is picking up the original picture, and we'll go into that more. If you say pick up underlying color, and it doesn't have to be a clone brush, it could be any type of brush, but pick up underlying color means that anything that's below is going to be included in what you're painting. So if you had added color and then you are painting on the next layer, it's going to pick up the underlying paint that you'd already added. Um, kind of like if, in real life, if you're doing an oil painting in, uh, with organic oil and you have wet oil down on the canvas and you're going to put down some white oil paint on top, it's going to mix with the other. That's how it works. There is one thing that, um, or a few things that uh, you can do on layers in Photoshop that is not necessarily under the layers section in uh, Corel Painter, and they're under effects. So, um, like for a drop shadow, If you go under effects, surface control is going to, um, you could add basically textures or looks to a layer, um, the color overlay that you're familiar with that is under the the prop um, the layers panel if you double click it's it's up here so that's one thing to think about is um, some there are some things that you can do specifically by double clicking on a layer when you're in Photoshop that that's not showing up here it's typically under the effects um, there's the tonal control and and they're they're located it's in different locations or different places because um, they the two programs will do the same thing, but you just got to find where it is in Corel Painter because it's going to be different from what it is in Photoshop. Um, and there is uh, 
an online resource that will help you under Corel Painter, and we'll talk about that. But like the tonal control is um, brightness and contrast. If you want to adjust a color or correct a color, surface control we did. Focus is going to be the blur, the sharpening. Um, Esoterica is going is fun. It has the high pass, um, which is used with uh, portraits. And then May's object, we'll go over these in more detail. There's the create a, a drop shadow. Well, we will go over these uh, in more detail, but I did want you to know where you could look for them rather than it being right here. And then, um, let's see, that's going to be it for the layers, the color harmony, um, the color mixer, the libraries. I think we've gone through everything. Um, if you want more panels or more menus open, more panels open, they're under here, under window. Same as it is in Photoshop if you want the navigator to show. Right here's the navigator. You click on it and it's a basically a smaller version of the canvas that you're working on and you can go over here and and choose a location and it brings it up it's it works the same the other thing that's under a window that i love is um reference image and marjorie can't see right now oh there it is uh the reference reference image if i have an image up and i'm working now i have uh, dual screens. I have actually three screens so that I'll ha I will have my reference image up real large on one of my other screens, but right here I can also have my reference image up in case I need to um, select colors, but we will go into that more uh, later also. So the next one that I'm going to cover is going to be the brushes, and so um, we'll see you on the next one.